on epidural complications. These are complications that can occur when you're getting epidural anesthesia. First, let's orient ourselves to what's going on. This is the spinal cord in yellow. The first layer around the spinal cord is the pia mater. That's in this blue. The subarachnoid space is shown in this teal color. The subarachnoid mater, which is another membrane, is shown in this red color. The dura mater is pink here. The epidural space, which is between the dura mater and this small ligamentum flavum, which kind of lines the vertebrae, um, is in this green, light green color. And then the vertebral bones are shaped like vertebral bones, and the interspinous ligaments are this blue in between the bones. The idea with epidural anesthesia is putting a needle into the epidural space and administering some uh, anesthetic like bupivacaine and maybe an opioid like fentanyl to numb the fibers, the nerve fibers that are associated with pregnancy uh, delivery pain. And um, that's the idea of what's going on. Now there can always be complications with everything. Uh, some of these are minor, some are more severe, and I'll kind of break them down according to their pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, and what to do about them once you recognize that it's going on. So let's go down the list. First we have local anesthetic systemic toxicity. The pathophysiology here is that the catheter goes into the epidural vasculature, uh, not depicted in this image, and it's essentially blood vessels that are around this area, um, and that means that the drugs end up in the systemic circulation. So this results in CNS overactivity because you just administered bupivacaine and fentanyl um, into, the, into the CNS. And uh, the signs and symptoms of that are that they can directly cause perioral numbness, metallic taste, tinnitus, seizures, tachycardia, and hypertension. So you can have this uh, sympathetic activation. The management is to stop the drug immediately. You can control seizures with benzodiazepines if necessary and provide supportive care. Next is epidural associated hypotension. This is when the epidural blocks the sympathetic nerve, so you get sympathetic blockage. Um, this causes vasodilation or venous pooling, which can result in hypotension and tachycardia. The signs and symptoms here are hypotension, um, as opposed to some of the others here, which will have hypertension, like local anesthetic systemic toxicity. The patient can become lightheaded and uh, they will have a compensatory tachycardia. If the pregnant is patient, or, sorry, if the patient is pregnant and your reason for doing the epidural um, was for delivery, you can lay them on their left side so that they are no longer laying on their, uh, on their great vessels. And they, this will help with some of the hypotension. Um, you can also administer vasopressors to help with the hypotension. So phenylephrine or epinephrine um, can help with that as well. Next is one of the more serious ones, the inadvertent spinal block, also called a high spinal or a total spinal anesthesia. The pathophysiology here is that local anesthesia punctures the dura. Um, so you, you actually went through this pink layer into the subarachnoid space. So you made it all the way into this teal and then you accidentally injected too far in. So this is kind of an exaggerated image. It's not obviously uh, this thick. It's usually one small layer. So you, you punctured through it um, and you're, you're now in the subarachnoid space. You accidentally administered your drugs in there. Um, this allows the drugs to ascend upward in the subarachnoid space and they can cause depression of cervical spinal cord and brainstem activity. So some of the signs and symptoms that you'll see are hypotension, bradycardia, complete motor blockage below the lower thoracic spinal levels. So you'll have diaphragm paralysis, which is concerning. That can result in dyspnea or apnea, as well as hypoxemia and difficulty speaking and swallowing. So you're essentially paralyzing the patient temporarily um, and they're not able to breathe, <clears throat> they're not able to speak. Management for this is uh, similar to the local systemic toxicity, you want to stop the infusion immediately. You want to provide supportive care, so vasopressors if necessary, intubation if necessary. Positioning is important here. You want to put them reverse Trendelenburg to decrease the ascending anesthetic spread. So um, if they are sitting up, the, then gravity will not help the anesthetic get up. Um, you want to make sure that they're not that that their that their spine is is angled upwards, that they're sitting up, not um, laying flat on their back or um, even worse, laying in the Trendelenburg position. Next is the post-dural puncture headache. The pathophysiology here is unintentional dural puncture during placement of neuroxial anesthesia. So if you accidentally just poke this, um, you can cause a headache later for the patient. So the headache usually develops within 72 hours of the procedure. Um, specifically, it'll be a positional headache, so it'll be worse when sitting upright. It'll be better when laying on your back supine. The patient might have a stiff neck, they can have nausea and vomiting, they can have photophobia, diplopia, it can even cause hearing loss and tinnitus. 
Um, the treatment for this is supportive. It usually is self-limited, goes away on its own. If it's really bad and you know doesn't go away quickly or is really intolerable, you can do an epidural blood patch to kind of patch up that, that puncture wound. Um, but usually that's not an issue. So this is an uh, overview of epidural complications. I hope it was helpful, and thank you for listening.